With me today are two artists, Tom Paquette from Warren, Pennsylvania. Everybody knows Tom. He is the vice president of the board of directors for the Crary Art Gallery on Market Street in Warren. And an exhibition coming up in June is Gerald Mead, a Buffalo artist, and he is with us today. Good morning to both of you. Good morning. I looked on the website for information on Gerald. I found artist, curator, and collector. So we're going to talk about all three of those, Gerald. But, Tom, let's start with you. And uh, the reception is for June the 8th, a Saturday night from 6 till 9 with Gerald. The people can meet Gerald. And is that open just to members? No. Everybody in Warren or anywhere else they care to come from is welcome. And at 7 o'clock, actually, Gerald will be talking about his work there as well. So good time to be there. Okay. This is the Crary Art Gallery on Market Street, 511 Market Street, next to 6th Avenue at the intersection of 6th and Market. Mm -hmm. One more thing. We're having a new sign put up. Hopefully it'll be up by that day, but you won't be able to miss the gallery at that point. Okay. And there's parking available on the streets or even in Midtown. You can walk up from town easily to the gallery. Then the uh, exhibition is from June 9th through July 6th. Right. And uh, the gallery is open Thursday through Sunday. Am I correct on that? It is, Thursday through Sunday. And you should check um, the Internet or we have the hours posted on on the wall at uh, the Crary Gallery as well. But um, basically about 10 o'clock in the morning till 5 at night most days. Friday night we're open late. And Saturday and Sunday, the hours are a little more restricted. And it's free admission to the Always gallery. Free. Mm-hmm. Always free. Now, before we get to Gerald, how did you become acquainted with Gerald Mead? Well, I think it was about two years ago. So. We were serving on a panel looking at artists' portfolios and giving them an idea what to expect in the real world. And um, as they present their work to museums or just to kind of spiff it up, Anyway, we were both serving on that panel, and since then, I I knew that he was a a curator, and I had a question about bringing some artists to the Crary, and I called Gerald, and the more we were talking, the more I realized, wait a minute, this guy's not only a great artist, but he's a great collector. Can we please have some of your work here at the Crary? And he agreed to do it, and it's an amazing show, both shows. I should say, first off, it's two shows, one of his work as an artist, and also Gerald has his own collection, which he's brought a generous number, I think uh, 43. Yeah, 43 works. How big of a vehicle did you need to get it here? (laughs) You know, ironically, it all fit in my Saturn Ion. (laughs) It's all very compact. (laughs) You are from Buffalo, Gerald, is that correct? Mm -hmm. That's your hometown. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's start with the artist part of you. When did you develop an interest in art? And take us a progression through your artistic career. Sure. Well, I'm, I'm actually one of 11 children, and my mother was an artist. Uh, she's a watercolor painter. And I was the only one of the 11 that uh, demonstrated some artistic interest. And so she developed, helped me develop that, encouraged that. And, and so I went on in college and got my degree in design and began working in um, uh, collage and assemblage. Continued to exhibit, was involved with the art community in Buffalo, and then eventually went on to be a curator in an art museum. But had been making art all through that whole period. My specific design concentration was fiber at Buffalo State College. They have a program in design that is for uh, fiber design. And uh, so it developed from that to collage and mixed media. You are a curator. Explain the duties of a curator. Sure. Well, a curator essentially is someone who organizes exhibitions. So would select, perhaps identify the theme for the exhibition or the focus or the individual artist, and then assemble the work and often write about the work if there's a published catalog. And I did that for uh, 18 years at the Birchfield Penny Art Center, which is a museum in Buffalo that specifically collects work by artists connected to Western New York and is named after Charles Birchfield, the renowned watercolor artist. And you are a collector, as Tom mentioned, so what art have you collected? What will be displayed at the uh, Crary? My specific interest, because of being, you know, a regional artist myself, was artists that have some connection to Western New York. So they may have been born there, they may have lived there, they may have gone to school there, because there are a number that are still there, but many who have passed through 
or who have gone on to larger national and international reputations. So it's kind of a sort of a sense of hometown pride. And it's Western New York, so defined by everything east of the Pennsylvania state line to Rochester. And so that kind of includes Allegheny, Monroe County, Genesee County, Cattaraugus. So what I have at the at the Crary is 43 works that span probably oh, close to 80 years and represent a good cross-section of some of the most well-known and accomplished artists that are from Western New York. So these are not just paintings, are they? No, it's paintings, prints, photography, collage. There's a real range from historic work, historic paintings from the turn of the century, to very contemporary work that is just a few years old. So there's abstraction, there's landscape, there's photography, there's portraiture. In fact, today we were just laying it out and setting it up, and each of the different rooms and areas of the gallery are set up sort of thematically. So you'll go into one gallery and you'll see a lot of the portraiture. Another gallery and you'll see some of the landscape uh, works together. So you can see different artists' approaches to the same subject. Explain to me collage and assemblage, okay. I believe you pronounced yeah, it. Yeah, collage. I, I know, I, I call it assemblage. I mean, I, it might be pronounced assemblage, but <laughs> assemblage sounds so much more artistic. artistic. <laughs> it does, assemblage. Uh, actually, collage is the, um, uh, it's relatively young art form because the first collage was made in 1912. So it doesn't go back hundreds of years. In fact, it just, just celebrated its 100-year anniversary. It's the blending and the mixing of materials, often found materials, often photographic materials, which are overlapped and overlaid, and a fancy term is called juxtaposed. So they're put in, in, um, co in connection and in concert with each other. And assemblage is when it gets into three dimensions. So when you have found objects that are also included in that. So collage, cut and pasted imagery, color, texture, Assemblage would be when you would add other found um, objects and three-dimensional materials onto it. Are computers ever used in art? You know, there's um, actually in terms of Photoshop, in terms of using now with, of course, with digital technology, being, being able to merge and use Photoshop to do that, mine is all hand done, hand cut and pasted. And, and also, too, with the computer, what you would actually be able to get is essentially just on one surface by using different textures of papers and some that might be laminated and shiny, others are more matte finished, some might have a texture to it. You also get other levels of varying um, visual uh, surfaces that you wouldn't be able to get with a computer per se because it's printed out on just one piece of paper. So, Is it time consuming? Yeah, it is time consuming and it, the, probably the most time consuming part about it is because the work all has a theme or a concept to it. So really some of the time is really involved in, in researching, coming up with the ideas and the concepts, and then maybe collecting and finding specific materials. You know, you may have an idea for something, but to execute that idea, you need to find a really interesting piece of flocked wallpaper, <laughs> so, which might need some searching. <laughs> if you're in the middle of a project, a collage, can you change your mind and do it differently? Oh yeah, yeah, and that's and I think the the we're doing a workshop on uh, the the day after the opening, a children's workshop, and because it's very accessible, um, because it's very approachable, it really involves. I would say there's a, there's art skills, but there's also design skills. It's a good point you make because it is very movable, and every time you in my work is very small. I, all of what I have in the show, my works rarely are larger than four inches by six inches, but there's a lot of detail in there. And just moving one or two things can change the whole composition, can change the whole balance. So, uh, yeah, that it's very intuitive. As you're working on it, it changes, and it tells you that something needs to be removed or to, you know, taken out or put back in. But the final product is what you envisioned or what you see. It's all visual. Is it is. Right? It's all visual. And the interesting thing about collage is that because mine are so small, and because collage is this intersection of all sorts of different imagery, it allows for you to create some connections that the viewer has to find. So they become, in a sense, like um, puzzles or anagrams or something to be deciphered. Because the collage simultaneously reveals and conceals because of the overlapping because you can actually overlap and conceal something, but depending on how much of it you leave exposed, you're actually revealing something. And it's that delicate balance. And also, too, 
because collage are, is made of fragments and scraps, etc., if you can think about just the corner of a dollar bill, you still know that's a dollar bill. You envision that there's an entire dollar somewhere, but what you put in there is just the corner. Mm -hmm. But the corner of the dollar bill in a collage may represent currency or money or wealth. You know, but it's just a little scrap. It's just, again, a little bit of a clue. Are the items within the collage ever listed somewhere, or is it up to the person viewing it yeah, to find what he can find? That's the magic of the term mixed media. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I think actually um, often it is just, you know, it's identified as mixed media because it could be literally a collage that, you know, the, of, of one of the ones that I have at the Crary right now has everything from pictures from magazines to the inside of a very old light bulb. Tom, have you ever done any work in collage? Actually, I did quite a few in graduate school, uh, and I'd be interested in showing you them sometime, Gerald. But, um, yeah, it's a, it's a fascinating process, and I was thinking about what you said about concealing and revealing, and I found that often you don't know, you talked about a vision of your, that you're presenting, but actually you discover things as you put things together. That was my experience. Do you also have that too? Yeah. I mean, you don't have an idea what it will look like, but yeah. you discover it as you move along. Right. And because okay. it's also material, you discover what the material can do. I mean, if you think about just a piece of paper, if you tear it one way and you tear it another way, what happens is can be very different. And it's, it's also because it's material that you're li actually literally manipulating cutting, piecing, tearing, folding. There's all these physical things that you discover. And, and, and then you begin to, uh, for, as I've done collage now going on you know, over 25 years, you begin to develop your own sort of language of mark making and your kind of bag of tricks of various things you can do that you start to develop your own sensibility. And then it's sort of like you know, developing your, your favorite you know, recipes or spices that you use, and it's how you combine all those together for the, it's kind of like, mm -hmm. it's like, it's the gazpacho of the art world. <laughs> I'm not familiar with that term. <laughs> you want to explain that? <laughs> it's a, go ahead, Tom. <laughs> Well, what, gazpacho? gazpacho? Yeah. Uh, cold tomato soup? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> tomatoes and, it, you know, it's in a blender. If you put tomatoes and, and uh, cucumbers, it's and sort of like a... And yeah, all yeah, kinds and of... And onions and vegetables. It's like a, yeah. It's, it's delicious. <laughs> so you never run out of ideas for a collage. There's always... What inspires you to do a yeah. certain collage? Yeah, you know, often it's what I, what, um, I collect material. Um, people often give me material. So somebody gave me you know, an entire um, collection of postcards from every state in the Union. Somebody else gave me medical slides from an, uh, an anatomy school. So often it emerges from the objects or the material that I've been, that I've been given. And then it kind of emerges from that as a, as a theme, and then it gets developed. You talked about fiber earlier in mm -hmm. our interview. I'm having a difficult time in my mind what are you talking about with fiber? Well, people would normally think of textile design. So in other words, how somebody would, would uh, design the pattern and the color for a textile or a woven fabric. And so the textile program was weaving, textile printing, but then also any craft-related design field that uses textile. Basketry, woven would also be, come into that realm, um, tapestry, wall hangings, uh, woven vessels, so anything that uses fiber in any way, anything from literally from a piece of thread to a very piece of like grapevine or like, um, you know, some type of thin fibrous wood. Is there an exhibit of that particular artwork with this show? Yeah, my work is um, often incorporates fiber in some way, so if you kind of embed it in it, as I move from the fiber field I incorporated photographs into my fiber work, and then eventually the two kind of flipped. More of the photography, less of the fiber. So the fiber and the found objects. In your collection, isn't there a fiber piece that's on display as well? Or what is that material next to the spaghetti? Oh, that one is <laughs> so actually that one's actually made of acrylic. It's oh, that is acrylic. Yeah, it's okay. extruded with a uh, with a cake decorating tip uh, that was done in the in the uh, in the eighties. Yeah. Now, today is May 31st when we're recording. Is the exhibit all set up or not yet? It'll be set up by Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we started lay laying it out. And that's the real fun of it. I mean, when I have, I have over 700 artworks in my collection by over probably 600 artists, I think. And that's the fun of it is that, you know, bringing them 
um, this particular body of work, when I got the call from Tom about a possible show or bringing some work up here, I had just put together a show called 50 at 50, 50 artists from my collection for my 50th birthday. I decided that that was how I was going to celebrate my birthday. <laughs> so my criteria for the 50 artists, I challenged myself to select among all the artists I had, you know, of, of the 600, who were the 50 who were the most celebrated, the most accomplished, and the most nationally and internationally well-known. And so I went through painting, photography, printmaking, um, the craft area, and selected just 50 of them. And actually what's at the Crary is 43 of those just made some You have some sculptural pieces as well within those 50? Yes. Yeah. And you would have brought those if we had a way to display them. Yeah, so yeah. It's the, there, were, there were about six or so, six or seven that were sculptural, that were three-dimensional. So what's there is just the framed, um, but prints, photography, paintings, drawings. What would you need to display a sculpture? Well, we'd need some sort of stands. We have some, but oftentimes you need a very specific size for each work and also yeah. a way to protect them. Uh, an acrylic vitrine to go over that or um, some way to keep people from picking them up and knocking them over, I guess, yeah. too. But there's also important. sculpture permanent. Some of, I can, when I were there today, there's, uh, there's sculpture from the permanent collection that's there on view, which is actually quite attractive. Oh, yeah. Yeah. On loan from the uh, Historical Society, actually. We, we oh. keep them there permanently on display. But, yeah, they're mm. pretty weighty, too, so they kind of hold their oh, own. Really? I no. didn't know about your work. It could have just yeah. floated off. I yeah, don't yeah, know. Yeah. But. You said 50 artists. I don't have time to list all 50, but mention a few of them. Well, you know, some of the most famous ones, there are uh, Robert Longo and Cindy Sherman are two contemporary artists that are in probably, in, in, Cindy Sherman is one of the most famous women photographers, well, today she is. Among those people are Robert Mangold, um, who was a printmaker and painter, the, the first woman artist that was accepted, her work became part of the Museum of Modern Art, was Clara Soprell, she's one of them, John Fall, Charles Birchfield is probably the most famous artist to come out of Buffalo. The, the, gosh, in terms of some of the other, um, any names that you were familiar to you that you were? Well, all of those, Ed, and now I'm... Ed Reinhardt. Oh, yeah. Um, there are a number mm -hmm. of artists who come from either spent their early years in Buffalo or they were born in Buffalo. But you, Ed Reinhardt, for example, his work is in probably nearly every museum in the world. And uh, so I'm fortunate to have one, uh, a, a print by him. Now, would you have uh, an exhibit from Tom Paquette, and would Tom have an exhibit from <laughs> Gerald Mead somewhere in your collection? Well, Tom falls outside of my collection. That's correct. Yeah. By 15 miles. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, and, and I have to tell you that, in terms of collecting, you know, uh, that's really just a limiting factor um, because, and that's just limiting myself geographically, you know, to an artist that have a connection to, because if the collection was of American artists, I mean, hundredfold would that in... in, in, in. And, and really, your collection is so diverse in other ways. I mean, within yeah. that spectrum of who lives here, yeah. uh, you also have, as you mentioned, photography and printmaking and right. fiber and right. painting, everything, really. So that would really open it up. So yeah. it's a good thing you have to be a little focused as a collector. What's a real joy is when the work is put up, because I've, the other thing that I've done is I've very um, freely lent my collection to different places. Mm -hmm. And often they've been to college or university galleries. Because a collecting institution and museum would not be able to um, lend to places like that that would just have a gallery on a campus. But because I teach at Buffalo State College, I really see the value of the students and the other faculty being able to have artwork to teach from. And so it's been a real joy for me to, for example, I did one that was just portraits. It was called About Face. It was portraits from my collection. I did one that was all prints from my collection. I did a show that was specifically just black and white work. But to see the work come together in a different context and to see dialogue between the pieces every time they're hung is really, it's like I'm experiencing them again and enjoying, you know, getting them out and having them shared. Tom, I want to get to Youth Day, which is Sunday, June 9th. Mm -hmm. Tell me about Youth Day. Well, this is a first ever for the gallery, but we're hoping to bring in people of all ages, especially youth, obviously, and a wide range within that because we're starting out the morning. Well, actually, it starts at noon, but with storytelling. The story is going to be read by um, Sue Spencer. And then at 1 o'clock, Gerald starts his workshop 
working with postcards for a slightly older group actually could go, we're looking at parents doing it as well. So, I mean, really it runs the whole gamut there for ages. And then after that, John Beard is going to be doing a magic show. And then at four o'clock, I believe, I, I'm sorry, I don't have the schedule in front of me. Four o'clock. Oh, there is music at four o'clock by Egypt Hollow. And um, so it's a really exciting day and we're offering a discount on a family membership at that time and for students that want to become members of the gallery as well uh, we have a special membership fee for them so it's always free so um, people coming in on that day have a special reason to come by how much is a membership to the Crary art gallery i don't know ah, how uh, could we find out we can go to the website that would, would be that... on the website and i apologize for not having that information right here but it's it's uh, accessible through the website very easily and on that day, too, you can sign up. But the, it's structured for individuals, families, annual, lifetime memberships. So it really runs, uh, there are different price structures to it. Website is crarygallery.org. And do you have special events for members only? We are. That's something that we're newly instituting again. Uh, in a month or so, we'll have a special event for people who have been so generous with their time proctoring and volunteering at the gallery as well as members so uh, that'll be a special event when we have a uh, ann fallon who is a former warrenite who lives in california and she's a well-known watercolor painter she'll be coming back with her work and a day before everybody else gets to see the work all these volunteers and members will be able to see her work and meet ann middle of july i believe you do depend a lot on volunteers the Crary Gallery wouldn't exist without volunteers. <laughs> it's true, yeah. I think we're coming close to the end. We want to mention again that the reception for Gerald Mead is Saturday evening, June 8th, from 6 till 9. And what will you do during the reception? He'll be giving a tour yeah, at I'm that time, will he not? And, exactly. and it, what, the benefit of that is that I, because I've, we, we spent some time and I've laid out the show, in a mind toward how I would actually tour, and I'd walk people through, and to make some connections between various different artists' approaches to the same subject, and share with them a little bit of the history of how those artists connect, and also how they um, relate to the Western New York region, and the national and international scene. This is your first time at the Crary Art Gallery? Yeah, very impressed. I have to tell you, I came down, I just saw pictures of it on the website, but this is my first time coming down. I'm on the board of a house museum in, um, in the West New York area that does a similar mission. Which one is that? Um, the Keenan Art Center in Lockport. It's a more of a historic an older house, but it's a wonderful space, really. I, I just I couldn't be more pleased with the setting, the environment for the work, and um, yeah, very, very impressed. I'm so pleased to have come down and done this. We're really happy to have his work here. I think it's a, it's a great thing to be able to see such a collection, as well as Gerald's own work here. It's, it's so very different, and it's very diverse. I think there will be something for everybody. Seriously, it runs from classic oil paintings to very contemporary work that's uh, very abstract and very conceptual, and it, it really, there's something for everybody. And I saw in your bio that you have taught at Chautauqua Institution. Are you still yes. doing not, work there? Not within the last couple of years. I had done a collage workshops there, actually, as part of their special studies program, School of Special Studies. And uh, I'm usually down there a couple times a summer, though. Gerald's uh, exhibition will be June 9th through July 6th. And the uh, gallery is open Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and uh, Friday evening, too. Exactly, yes. So for information, log on to the website, crarygallery.org. And gentlemen, anything we left out that we need to mention? No, just that I'm, I'm so thrilled. This is the first time ever in my 25 years of collecting and making artwork that my artwork has been shown alongside my collection. First time. Of course, it had happened outside of Buffalo. <laughs> <laughs> and I have to end, Tom, with an inside joke. We didn't hear any popcorn, did we? <laughs> <laughs> they all have to ask Tom Plaquette or uh, Gerald Mead about that <laughs> remark. And uh, Gerald Mead from Buffalo, New York, has been with me, and Tom Plaquette from Warren, Pennsylvania. I thank both of you for being here. Thank you, Mark. Thank you.